Good morning. So glad that you're joining us for worship this morning. If you're here, say hello, um, like, love, let me know that you're around. Um, we're so glad that you're able to join us. Um, my name is Pastor Sarah, and I'm the pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church in Greenville, Tennessee. We are continuing during this time to worship um, from our homes um, right now out of love for our community. Um, we actually received word from our bishop this last week that we will continue doing this for a little while longer. Um, but as soon as I know that we're able to meet in the church again, I'll be sure that everyone knows. But for now, what a pleasure it is to see you here this morning. I hope this service is a time where you are renewed and refreshed and you are blessed by God. I hope that you hear a word that is just for you this day. God bless you. We need your peace and strength, Lord. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We are somewhere between fear and hope, believing that you, O oh God, hold the future. Christ is risen. Alleluia. We need Jesus. We long to feel his presence. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes. How is everybody? I hope everybody's staying well and staying home and being safe. I hope you got to go outside though some this week and play because the weather's been very nice this week, hasn't it, Hadley? Mm -hmm. Have you been out play, playing outside? A lot. A lot. Good. But I sure do miss everybody. We miss every, seeing our friends, don't we? Hey, Hadley. Do you have friends? Lots. Lots of friends? How did you meet your friends? Um, they, I met my friend, um, I met some of my friends at gymnastics and some of my friends at school. Yeah, how about your church? You have friends yeah. at church? Lots. Yeah, yeah, lots of friends at church too. What do you do with your friends? I play a lot. You play? How about learn? Yeah, you lots. Learn, I learn lots, a lot? Lots. Okay. What do you, what do friends do for each other? Um, Has a friend ever done anything nice for you? Mm -hmm. What? Um, sometimes I fell down and they helped me. They did? <laughs> a friend did that? Mm -hmm. Well, that was a nice friend, wasn't mm -hmm. it? How about you? Have you ever been a nice friend to somebody? Mm -hmm. What did you do? Um, I played when 
not a lot of people were there to play because everybody else was playing their own games. Oh, and so there was a, somebody lonely and you went up and you were their friend? That's a nice thing to do. That's a nice thing that friends do. Friends are important, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. Do you think Jesus wants us to have friends? Yeah. I think so, too. I think Jesus wants us to have good friends. What about you? Good friends have fun together, don't they? And they play, and they talk, and they listen. And good friends don't say mean things to each other, do they? No. And a good friend, what would, would a good friend do if you were sad? Um, make me happy. Make you happy. What would a good friend do if you were happy? Just would that be happy with me. That's right. They'd be happy, too, if you were happy. And they help each other? Yes. And friends always want what's best for each other, don't they? Because they treat each other with kindness. Hmm. Are these things that you think a friend, that's the kind of friend you would want to have? Mm -hmm. Right. I think so, too. If you got our email, you got a activity sheet. And one of the things that was included was a sheet that looked like this. And it told you to go and color in with a pencil the word friends and then it said for you to rub your finger and Hadley's going to do that rub your finger over some of that black there and see what happens okay Hadley let me see. oh no look at her finger look what rubbed off hmm Hadley does your friends rub off on you mm -hmm. do they do they rub off good things or bad things? Uh, Both, don't they? But God, Jesus wants us to pick friends that rub off good things, don't, doesn't he? Not the bad things. He wants us to be careful when we choose our friends, doesn't he? He wants us to choose our friends wisely and not let the bad things that they, some of friends do rub off on us. Jesus doesn't want that, does he? Sure doesn't. Hadley, let's think about this a minute. Did Jesus have any friends? Lots, probably. Lots. I bet he did, too. We read stories in the Bible, don't we, about Jesus and his friends? Well, I want to share the gospel that we're... Dinner, Jesus held up the bread, just like he did at the Last Supper. You remember that? When Jesus said, this is my body given for you. And all at once, Jesus' two friends recognized Jesus. Jesus, their friend, was there all along. But then something happened. Jesus vanished real quickly because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. Did you know that Jesus wants to be your friend? He sure does. Jesus wants to be our best friend, doesn't he? Jesus wants to be a friend that we can talk to when we're sad. We can talk to when we're happy. We can go to Jesus and he will understand anything that we are going through. If we're having a bad day or if we're having a good day. If we're scared or if we're afraid or if we're excited. Jesus wants to be that friend there that you talk to all the time. Do you think you could talk to Jesus? Do you think Jesus is going to listen to you? I think so too because it's important to remember that Jesus can be our best friend. Jesus loves everybody, doesn't he? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for my friends. I'm so glad that you love me and have given me good friends. Help me to treat others like I want to be treated so I can be a good friend too. And help me to remember that you are my best friend. Amen. Luke tells us in his gospel about the walk to Emmaus. I'm going to read from verse 13 through 35 in chapter 24. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from them from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? 
they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as a woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and he, how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, just tell me good morning again. Um, like, love, let me know that you're here. I love seeing that you're here. Um, we're continuing this morning um, in the season of Eastertide. And so last week we talked about Thomas and the disciples. And this week um, we're looking at the story that Miss Wilma read for us. Thank you, Wilma. And by, by the way, thank you, Susie and Hadley and my Allison um, and Josh and Carrie um, for all that you've done to contribute to worship. Thank you, Angie, for your help and um, Tyler for your continued ministry um, and all of our wonderful volunteers for what they're doing in our church. We really, I really appreciate you personally. Appreciate all that you're doing. Um, but anyway, I, I took a moment there to thank everybody and um, got a little bit off track here, but that's an important thing to do. Oh, one other thank you. I have these beautiful flowers here this morning. Um, these were a gift from Steve and Becky Mallory. Um, they said, oh, would you like some flowers um, to preach? And I thought, well, of course I would. That would be wonderful. And so I'm going to say that these flowers are in honor of our church family, um, in honor um, of each of you that are watching this morning. So enjoy those beautiful flowers. I'm also coming to you um, from my front porch. So a little different location, um, if you will, but it's a um, it's good to move things around and shake things up a bit. Let's pray together this morning. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So I'm curious, do you have a friend? One, one really great friend, at least one good friend. Who comes to your mind when I ask you who your friend is? Now, I don't want you to say someone in your immediate family. Don't say your spouse or someone who shares blood with you, but a friend, someone who um, is outside of those circles, but who is in your life. Who do you think of? 
Maybe um, you're like me and you've been fortunate to think of lots of people that God has put in your life to be your friend and to journey with you um, in a time when you needed them um, and journey with you in a time when you needed to learn something, you need to grow. Um, but I hope you'll take just a minute to think about who those friends have been and um, maybe even think about who some friends, um, friendships might be in your life that you need to cultivate this morning. Um, in our story for today, we have two friends that are walking on the road. They're walking back from Jerusalem after the week of the Passover, after Jesus died on the cross, after they saw this Messiah whom they had followed um, have a pretty terrible end to the week. And they are walking home um, on the road to Emmaus and processing what happened. It's pretty safe to assume that they're talking about their feelings, their expectations, their disappointments. When the stranger walks up and asks them what they're talking about, and they say, how do you not know if you're coming from Jerusalem? And the stranger says, well, just indulge me. Now we know the stranger is Jesus. And so they tell the stranger, we had hoped this man was the Messiah had hoped. Oh, what a sad, sad phrase. Hope is a word that's meant to squarely be in the future, but in this case, it's past tense. We had hoped he was the Messiah. Usually when Jesus greets someone post-resurrection, he says something like, peace be with you, but in this moment, Jesus says, you fools. Apparently, Jesus, even stranger Jesus in this moment, felt that he had pretty clearly explained to those that followed him that he would have to die um, and that he would have to be raised again. But no one seemed to hear that because human beings are used to hearing from our personal biases and our personal expectations of the things that we expect God to do and to say and to be. And so Jesus tells these two friends along the road um, about what Jesus did way back, starting with Moses and going through the prophets. Now, the theologian in me wishes that that part of the speech was included in the gospel lesson for today, but I realize that it's probably not because it's making a point as well, that we humans are going to hear what we're going to hear. Also, you'll notice that it's even in Jesus's preaching, which I would imagine is some of the best preaching out there, that these two are not convinced they're not convicted. Even listening to Jesus open up the scriptures to them. Ooh, that takes some pressure off preachers, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, they continue on on this journey with Jesus down the road. And when they get to the end of the road, where they're about to go home for the night, and they notice that the stranger is going to continue on, they invite him to come inside for a meal, to break bread with them. Another word for friend is the word companion, which literally means one with whom you break bread. And so they invite Jesus in. You don't invite someone to a meal unless you want to have a conversation with them. And conversation is the beginning of friendship. It is the foundation of that understanding. I mentioned to you that I've had several friends in my life that I think fit the bill of those who have journeyed with me through joyful and difficult times. One person that does surface who has been with me for almost, I guess, 18 years now is my friend um, Jody. Jody is also a pastor. Between the two of us, we have five daughters. Um, we were with each other and, and walking with each other as friends when we both met our husbands and we were at each other's weddings. We were ordained together. Um, we met back in college. We have been on road trips and been to concerts and done really smart things together and some pretty foolish things together. Um, but over the years, she has been someone that has been a constant companion a constant friend, someone who could challenge me because she could see through uh, my own personal biases and perceptions, but also someone who knew how to love and knows how to love and encourage me um, and knows what I need to hear, doesn't need to hear the story because she already knows the stories.
One of the best ways I know to describe Jody and I is to look back in those seminary days when we were roommates. Um, and we have a lot in common, a lot of similarities of things that we like, colors, um, clothing that we like, um, music artists that we like. Um, and now as mothers, um, we have several things in common with that as well. Um, but one of the ways that we are different is the way that um, God calls us to express our personalities. And so when we were in seminary, we were roommates. And Jody is the kind of person that wakes up at the same time every morning, has the exact same routine, makes her bed, keeps her room immaculate, um, plans out her clothes the night before, makes sure that her book bag is organized. She's the kind of person that I aspire to be, but I can never quite have myself together to be. And so Jody would get up, she would have everything ready, she would eat her breakfast, and she would wait for me to come out of my room. And most mornings she ended up knocking on my door. And when she knocked on my door, she was usually greeted by me swinging that door open recently dressed with my backpack and some supplies there with everything else I needed for the day in my arms and we would rush out the door to the car and then when we got to the car she would hand me a cereal bar or some piece of fruit because she knew that I hadn't had breakfast when we arrived at school Jody would make her way into the classroom she would wave and smile at people politely but um, find her way to class a few minutes early so that she could bask in the glow of being early you can ask my husband, I have never been a bask in the glow of being early kind of gal. And I think as your pastor, you have experienced me in that way as well. I tend to be a right on time kind of person or just a few seconds or even a minute late. And so my pathway into class was to greet every single person along the way, to hug them, to high five them, to say hello, to continue to put stuff in my backpack as I go, to meet a new friend even, and then find myself in class about a minute after it started. And thanks to my friend Jody, there was a seat waiting for me. You see, she and I have similar traits and similar things about us, but also different ways that we express ourselves in the world. And God has used those gifts um, in our different ministries in other ways as well. But back to the story for today, we have Jesus with these two friends who have invited him in because they want a conversation. And it's at this meal, which makes us probably think of communion, but I'm going to scale back before we go into church mode here for a second. Just keep it simple. Imagine a family gathering with no special um you know, cups or plates, no special dressing on the table, nothing special, just a family gathering because you're supposed to eat. Eating is part of life, but also eating not only fuels our bodies, but it does truly fuel our souls. And it can truly be a love language. And so you have this family gathering and you have Jesus, this stranger who has been invited to be their friend. He picks up the bread. He blesses it and breaks it and then they remember. It's in that moment of friendship that they see Jesus. They see Jesus. It's a remarkable story because it takes the pressure off our ability to talk about our faith and instead invites us to simply live it to be people of hospitality, to be people who forgive, to be people who offer friendship. And in that friendship, experience the risen Lord as our perceptions are challenged, as we're encouraged, as we walk along this journey of life. So I don't know what friend you thought of this morning or friends, but I hope today you'll pick up the phone and you'll call one of those people and hear their voice and tell them how grateful you are with them. Maybe even reminisce with them over a good time that you had together and consider where Christ was in your midst in that moment, in that breaking of the bread. And let's look forward to the time when we can um, get out of our homes again and share bread and break bread with one another across a table so that we might have those deep conversations. But for now, in a COVID-19 world, let's call, let's text, let's FaceTime, let's deepen those relationships. And if for you this morning, you're saying, Pastor Sarah, I don't, I don't have a friend like that. I don't have a person that I can call. I wanna encourage you, it's never too late 
to begin to cultivate a relationship with someone. So I invite you, if you're that person, to take a minute and pray and ask God to reveal someone to you that you might call today and just say, hello, how are you? And let's see how we might experience Jesus through friendship, through friendship with one another. Let's pray. Holy God, I pray that today that you surround us with your love and peace, that you remind us, Lord, that you are our best friend, that you are a friend who is advocating for us, encouraging us, strengthening us, and speaking truth to us when we need to hear it. Lord, help us to listen in to our friends. Help us to surround ourselves with people who point us toward deeper understanding of you. And hear us now, Lord, as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, friends, they fail us sometimes, and they, um, they betray us. Um, sometimes friends um, go in and out of our lives. They're just there for a season. But I want to encourage you that it's through those friendships that we can experience a means of grace and mercy, that we can learn more about ourselves, especially if those friendships are rooted in a shared faith, in a shared faith in Jesus Christ. And so, dear ones, this week, I hope that you'll do some reflecting on friendships. What friendships in your life do you need to cultivate? Who do you need um, to, to call and connect with? Who needs to hear your voice today? Who needs to be reminded that they do not journey through this life alone? Go in God's peace and have a wonderful week. God bless you. I miss you. And I hope um, to hear from some of you throughout this week.